I'm gonna divorce you. Give the apartment to my sister and get out right now. My emotional husband screamed over the phone. I replied calmly and coldly. I already moved out. My name is Gina. I'm a 35-year-old consultant. I've been married to Dean for three years now. We met through work. We were both handling business for our respective companies. He was dedicated to his job, and I thought he was an honest person, which was what originally attracted me to him. It seemed like he was interested in me too, and we gradually grew closer and started going out. Everything went smoothly, and he popped a question. I thought I could have a happy married life with him. At first, it was really great. Our newlywed life was exciting, and we enjoyed our time as a couple. But there was one problem that bothered me: his mother. Whenever I saw Shirley, she asked when we were having a baby. I initially thought it was just a simple inquiry, but I got tired of hearing it every time we visited her. Besides that, she constantly pushed household chores on me, saying that I was her daughter-in-law and should have helped around the house. She made me sweep, wipe, do laundry, and even cook. I couldn't understand why I had to be bossed around like that. To make things worse, Dean told me to obey her. One day, after a series of such incidents, I complained to him. Why do I have to take orders from your mom? He responded with annoyance. Just cut it out. I don't want to hear it from you either. What do you mean by either? I get asked about grandchildren, and she says you haven't been educated well enough as a wife. Besides, she's the one who covered the wedding expenses, you know. You should listen to her, okay? What are you talking about? It's the first time I heard about this. When we got married, he had told me he'd covered the wedding and had paid about twenty thousand dollars. I was impressed. And thought he was a responsible person to have such savings, but it turned out he had just taken the money from his mother. I was completely disillusioned. You should have been honest from the beginning. Sorry, but I was worried that if I mentioned it, you might dislike me. I found his behavior dishonest, and questioned his character. We owe her a lot, so. Please be nice to her," he begged me to understand. I realized that if she had indeed paid for our beautiful wedding, I should be thankful. By the way, my father-in-law had already passed away, and she was living alone. She paid a significant amount of money for us, so I felt grateful. When I visited her after that, I thanked and apologized to her. Listen, Shirley, I didn't know you covered the wedding expenses. I'm sorry for not expressing my gratitude earlier. Thank you so much. She wore a smug expression on her face and responded, "I couldn't help but think how incredibly rude you are." Oh,、uh, I'm sorry. If you're really feeling remorseful, then get to work on the chores. Sure. I sign, resign to the fact. Her house was much bigger than ours, so the chores were incredibly taxing. To make matters worse, Dim wanted to visit her about three times a month. It's not nice to leave my mom all alone, you know. We should go and check on her. I started to feel like there was no need for me to accompany him every time. When I brought this up to him. He was adamant that we go together. It showed that we're a close couple. She can interact with me while you help her with the chores. We can divide our task efficiently, so it's better for both of us to go together. Seriously, it made no sense to me. 
I thought he should take up on the chores then. However, he seemed convinced that he was right, and didn't consider my perspective. As a result, I found myself in an unpleasant situation a few times every month. Oh boy, Gina, you're really not good at cooking. I wonder how you managed to make everything taste so terrible. Well, everything tastes bad compared to your cooking. Oh, Dean, you always say such nice things. I'll cook next time then. I was relieved that she'd take over the cooking, thinking it lessened my burden on our next visit. However, her cooking was incredibly salty. And unpalatable. It was evident that she used seasoning heavily, and even a small bite was enough to make me lose my appetite. Nevertheless, Dim happily exclaimed, "See, your cooking is the best." Oh, Dean, you really get it. Gina's food doesn't have any flavor at all. I thought. No way! It's just that your cooking tastes like nothing but salt and herbs. They completely overpower the natural flavors of the ingredients. She looked at me with a satisfied expression and asked, "So, how is it? Delicious, right?" Yes. I forced myself to finish the plate, but I felt incredibly nauseous afterward. I told myself to cook from next time, but then I thought I'd rather not have a next time. It didn't make sense for me to accompany Dean, so I came up with a plan the next time he wanted to visit her. Oh no, I seem to be running a fever. Really? Yeah, it's one hundred point six degree Fahrenheit. But Shirley wants us to come together, right? Don't blame me if I pass it to her. Upon hearing this, Dean became flustered. No, no, you don't have to come. I'll go alone. You stay home today and get a rest. I internally celebrated the success of my plan with a triumphant cheer. It had been a while since I had quality time to myself. And I could finally relax and recharge. Dean decided to spend the night at Shirley's place, giving me even more free time. That made me realize how much I needed to have some time to myself. So, I started using the same strategy every two or three times. But if you overused a sick day, it was bound to raise suspicions. Do you really have a fever? Well. The thermometer says so. Then measure it again right now. I hesitated, thinking my scheme would be finally discovered. While measuring my temperature, I slightly rubbed the thermometer to make it read high. But if I had to take it in front of him, I couldn't do that. See, it's ninety-six degree Fahrenheit. It's not a fever, but it's even on the lower side. Have you been? Deceiving me all this time, lying to your partner—that's just not cool. You were the one who lied to me first, you know. What did you say? Remember when you tried to look cool and claim you paid for the wedding? You're not different. God damn it! Stop bringing up old stuff like that. Anyway, we're going to mom's. You better apologize to her. Yeah, right. I'm not going anymore. Don't be so selfish. Don't act like the world revolves around you. You're no exception to what was said, you know. Don't assume that I should always obey you in everything. Anyway, I won't be visiting your mom so often. If you're concerned about her, go on your own. Never mind then. He seemed taken aback that I was standing my ground. And eventually gave up for the day, leaving on his own. If we had to fight like that every time, it'd take a toll on me emotionally. I wonder if there was a better solution. I could have figured it out on my own, 
so that I went to consult with my parents. Oh dear, so that's what's been going on. The thoughts a bit selfish of him. Yeah, no matter what I say, he always prioritizes his mother. Even when I don't want to go, he forces me. I've been thinking about separating for a bit. When I explained the situation, they came up with a suggestion. How about living in one of the apartments we own? Really? Is that okay? I knew they invested in real estate. They earned quite a bit from rental income. Plus, my dad had a well-paying job at a large corporation, so they had substantial funds for investment and owned several properties. They offered to let me use one of them. It became vacant recently. We were in the process of finding a new tenant. You can use it as a second home. Whoa! Thanks. I immediately moved the essentials to the new apartment. I bought some appliances like a fridge and a microwave and some low-cost furniture. I had been so frustrated with Dean that I decided to leave separately for the time being. While he was at Shirley's place, I left a note saying, "I won't be back for a while," and left the house. As expected. He bombarded me with calls, but I ignored them. After about a week, I was shocked to see him waiting in front of the apartment building. Why are you here? You're having an affair, aren't you? What are you talking about? There's no way. Then whose apartment is this? I've been following you and seeing you return here every day after work. You're an only child. And your parents live in the house, right? So the only explanation is that you've been going to some other man's place. I was completely disgusted by his behavior. That's so creepy that you've been following me around. It's your fault for suddenly leaving me. I'm renting this place by myself. It's just me here. Don't try to feed me such an obvious lie. Then why don't you come inside and see yourself? I reluctantly led him into my apartment. There was no evidence of another man living there. He searched the entire place but found nothing. It seemed he finally believed me. Why did you rent this place in the first place? Why don't you ask yourself that question? You should realize how carelessly you've treated me all this time. What? I've been considerate of our life together. What about your mother? You tried to force me to visit her even when I didn't want to. Did you ever consider how stressed I was? She has always been kind to you, and tried to teach you how to handle household chores. Kind? It's ridiculous to interpret her behavior as kindness. She's been bullying me. She wouldn't do that. If things haven't changed, then get out. There's nothing more to say to you. I firmly told him to leave. He was shouting, but when the next door neighbor complained about the noise, he hastily left. I was freaking out that he had discovered me, but I couldn't back down. I decided that I wouldn't return until he showed genuine remorse and committed to changing his ways. If things remain the same, we should just get a divorce. Just as I was thinking that, he did something totally unexpected. One weekend, he suddenly showed up at my place again. What's more, he brought his sister with him. What are you doing here, Kathy? Whoa, this is quite a nice place. She casually walked in and inspected the place. I told you it would be perfect for you. Dean followed her inside. What's going on? Why did you bring her here? I didn't have a good relationship with her either. We only saw each other during holidays, but she had always been critical for me, often joined Shirley to making my life difficult. So I didn't have a favorable impression of her. Okay, I'll take it. What the heck does that mean? I mean, 
I live here. I'm moving next month, so please take care of things. Oh, and the rent as well. I was utterly baffled. You moved out of here and live with mom and me. Are you kidding me? I've decided to move in with mom. So stop being stubborn. Come home and start packing. I'd had enough. There was no point in being a part of the family with them. I had made up my mind to get a divorce. So I remained silent. They must have assumed that I had agreed. They had left with smug expressions. After they were gone, I took immediate action. I explained the situation to my parents and decided to move out. To avoid being followed again, I also asked my office to follow me to work remotely. My parents swiftly handled the situation and found new tenants for the apartment. The location was excellent, and it was a spacious and clean apartment. So they quickly found someone to move in. I then found a new place to live in a different area from where Dean resided. Since I no longer had to go to the office, I didn't need to be in the area where I most likely bumped into him. I completed all the necessary procedures in no time and was able to live alone safely. Soon enough, Dean called me incessantly. Hey, where are you now? I told you to come back, right? We're supposed to move in with mom, so hurry up. We still have so much to pack. He angrily shouted. Too bad. I won't be leaving with you guys. Why should I have to leave with someone who bullies me? Then I told him this. He lost his temper. Stop messing around. How selfish can you be? I'll divorce you, you know. Give the apartment to Kathy and get out of there right now. He was worked up and screamed over the phone. I responded calmly and coldly. I've already moved out. I've been leaving somewhere else. He must have been surprised and calmed down a bit. You should have told me that sooner. I'll let her know. If you already moved out, then stop being stubborn and just come back. You actually miss me, don't you? I was amazed by his optimism. I don't know what you're trying to say, but I'm quite busy right now, so I have to go. Then I ended the call. I intentionally avoided any further contact for a while. After some time, I got a frantic call from him again. Hey, what the heck is going on? Why is there already someone else living in that apartment? Kathy and I were almost mistaken for trespassers, and the police almost got involved. I couldn't help but burst into laughter. I wished I could have witnessed the scene. Who told you to let her leave there? What? That apartment is owned by my parents. So, as soon as I moved out, they found a new tenant and signed a contract. N no way. So... Where's she supposed to leave now? Well, she could move in with you guys, right? Don't be ridiculous. I won't let you get away with this once you return. Whatever you say. We're getting a divorce for sure. Huh? I've already made up my mind to serve times with you guys. I won't be leaving with your mom in a million years. What? Divorce? Are you serious? I'm always serious. It's you guys who are out of your minds. Well then, let's discuss things through lawyers. Then I hand up the phone. Later, I demanded a divorce through a lawyer. I also sought compensation for the emotional distress I had suffered due to the harassment from the three of them. They were completely flabbergasted by the fact that I went after them. At present, they are living together at their family home. Shirley squandered her late husband's inheritance, and Kathy doesn't work or do any housework. All the financial burdens have fallen squarely on Dean, who doesn't have a particularly high income. As a result, 
They're living a financially strained life. They brought this upon themselves, and it serves them right. On the other hand, I'm comfortably continuing my life, working and enjoying living alone. I plan to increase my savings for a while, discover some hobbies, and continue to build a fulfilling life.